It's been good to see neighbours helping each other in these recent weeks, doing shopping for the vulnerable, fetching prescriptions, having a chat at a suitable distance, or sharing and clapping and banging pans to honour the NHS and care workers and many others. Yes, our patience runs thin at times, but by and large we have a sense that we are in this together and need to look out for each other. But worship this morning takes us one step further. It reminds us that we are connected to a worldwide Christian family, that we call to be lights not just to our close neighbours, our family and friends, but to our global neighbours too. Christian Aid reminds us of the neighbours we have sometimes passed by. Our neighbours around the world, neighbours in refugee camps and cramped living conditions, neighbours without adequate hand washing facilities, neighbours who face the devastating impact of coronavirus with even less of the medical resources we have struggled to access here in the West. They are beyond our reach physically, but we can still reach out to them in many different ways. First, we can simply be conscious of them and become aware of the particular challenges that they face. At times our media can be very parochial, very focused on coronavirus and its effect on our nation, our people, and less concerned to give attention to the rest of the world. At times there seems to be a pecking order, with the UK, Europe and USA at the top, and then Asia and then Africa receiving much less attention. And we need to challenge that view that partial way of looking at the world. We need to learn about the Florences of this world. People like her in so many places. So let's deepen our awareness and concern. Let's challenge any narrow vision in ourselves and in others. And second, we can pray, and we can sense the prayers of others across the planet. In Africa, leaders of all the main faiths have called for prayer across the continent. In their statement, the leaders say, as people of faith, we turn to the creator of the universe in such times of fear and uncertainty, as we do in times of joy and celebration. Therefore we call upon all faithful, all the faithful and people of goodwill to join us in the prayer to curb the outbreak of the pandemic. We pray for the medical professionals, caregivers and researchers who are working day and night tirelessly to save lives. We pray together as citizens of the world in the fight against the spread of COVID-19. And then they backed up that call for prayer across Africa with a call to action, to send protective equipment to the poorest communities among them, to operate along the best guidelines and to support government and health agencies. Amazing to see prayer not only crossing national boundaries but religious ones as well. And finally, we can give. It may not be so easy with no collecting tin in front of us, no envelope to put our money in, but we can still give. Today, giving online at the press of a button is easier than ever before. And you can go directly to Christian Aid through the comment page beside this video. 
Or if you want to do it through the local church, you can make a transfer saying clearly that your donation is for Christian aid. Or send a cheque payable to the church, but again clearly marked for Christian aid. And we'll make sure the money gets there. Or perhaps you can think of some way to fundraise, even in these lockdown days. One URC member in Woking is going to have his hair shaved this morning as part of their live-streamed worship. Justin is married to the minister, Lucy Brearley, but she's not volunteering to do so yet, and neither am I. Too few to lose. Maybe there's some less painful way. We're thinking about running a quiz on Zoom, but you may have other ideas. And if you can do none of these things, then put some money aside. In a drawer or a jar, write yourself an IOU to Christian Aid and give to Christian Aid when you can. The need and the work is not going to stop any time soon. Christian Aid is there working with communities and church groups long term. No quick flash in the pan, but painstaking work to support and to train and to equip communities that are in desperate straits. A bigger vision, a wider reaching prayer and generous giving. These themes link in to our scripture readings and their vision of what Jesus was and is about. Jesus, the living stone on which God can build a people of praise and of compassion to bring light to those whose lives are darkened by poverty or disease, by violence or fear. And those who have much in material terms are poor in soul as well and need that light. In John's Gospel, Jesus describes himself as the way, the way to God in this life and beyond this life. He tells his disciples that there's plenty of room in his father's house in that loving heart of God. There's room for everyone. And the way to that loving heart has been opened by Jesus himself. He is the one who is closest to the Father's heart, the one who has shown the truth and love of God in all its glory. And we're invited into that loving relationship of son to father, of child to parent, into the very heart of God. And that heart is full of grace and life and compassion and faithfulness, not just for a few, but overflowing into our needy, broken world. We are invited into that place of absolute faithful love. We're invited to walk the way of Jesus. We're invited to know that life is made new. That life that is lived in a different light. In the light of faith. The light of hope. The light of love. So may we be bringers of hope this week through our awareness of others, through our praying, through our giving and our living. May we hold God's hope within us and live out that hope day by day. Some years ago, Christians from Chile facing many trials wrote this affirmation entitled, They will not rob me of hope. And Simon Howard is to read this to us. An affirmation from Chile. They will not rob me of hope. I believe that behind the mist, the sun waits. I believe that beyond the dark night, 
it is raining stars. I believe in volcanoes and the world below. I believe that this lost ship will reach port. They will not rob me of hope. It shall not be broken. My voice is filled to overflowing with the desire to sing. The desire to sing. I believe in reason and not in the force of arms. I believe that peace will be sown throughout the earth. I believe in our nobility, created in the image of God and with free will reaching for the skies. They will not rob me of hope. It shall not be broken. You, great God, give me a hope that will not die, a crucified saviour who lives forever. I will walk his way, share his truth, live his life today. With Christ beside me, hope shall not be broken. Amen.